Hello, I'm Pastor Steve Savage, lead pastor at Grinnell Friends Church, and we're delighted to have you here for this Sunday service. The pandemic continues to take up a major portion of our time, our focus, and our energies, and especially our thinking. Wouldn't you agree? Maybe it's time for us to refocus. As a pastor, it is quite normal for me to take you into the Bible to find answers for our lives. But uh, one of the things that I uh, and many others recognize is that uh, many people today, including people within the church even, do not look at the Bible as very authoritative in their lives. They are thinking or asking questions like, but the Bible is so old, does it really have any pertinent information to help me in the decisions I need to make in, in modern day life? The Apostle Paul has earned the right to speak to us about suffering, and this is why. Did you know that the Apostle Paul spent roughly one quarter of his missionary years in prison? John McRae wrote in Christian History Magazine, and I quote, Roman imprisonment was preceded by being stripped naked and then flogged, a humiliating, painful, and bloody ordeal. The bleeding wounds went untreated as prisoners sat in painful leg or wrist chains. Mutilated, blood-stained clothing was not replaced, even in the cold of winter. Most cells were dark, especially the inner cells of a prison, like the one Paul and Silas had inhabited at Philippi. Unbearable cold, lack of water, cramped quarters, and sickening stench from few toilets made sleeping difficult and waking hours miserable. Because of the miserable conditions, many prisoners begged for a speedy death. Others simply committed suicide. In settings like this, Paul wrote encouraging, even joyful letters and continued to speak of Jesus. In fact, he wrote in this same book of Philippians while he was in prison, as mentioned earlier, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. He wrote that in prison, under guard, in humiliating and degrading conditions, uh, not in the service of a king in a king's castle here upon the earth, not in his own home, the fruit of his labors in an acceptable ministry, but under persecution and rejection, he suffered greatly, and yet he could say, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let me ask you an important question this morning. And that question is this. How is it that different people can go through the same experiences with very different results? Why is it that some people commit suicide while others, like the Apostle Paul, continue living in praise to God, uh, lifting up his name that is above all other names. That's Jesus, our Christ, our Lord and Savior. Some of us know the despair that leads to thoughts of suicide. Some knew the desperation of hard and difficult times before this pandemic broke out upon us. Even a pandemic-free life can be filled with brokenness, can't it? Do you know those thoughts and feelings? Well, let me tell you something this morning. You are not alone. We have no way of knowing how many are suffering in the darkness of their souls. The question is not really who or how many are struggling in this manner. Rather, the real question is this. What can I do to be healed of these deadly and destructive thoughts and feelings? Let me begin by telling you what not to do. This one is entitled, The Relentless Pursuit of Happiness. According to Psychology Today, in 2008, there were 4,000 books published on the subject of happiness, up from 50 books published in the year 2000. I don't have statistics to tell us where we are today, but I would guess that we are at least 4,000 book titles on happiness today, and probably a lot more. Now, it is perfectly natural for the world to blindly seek self-centered happiness. That shouldn't surprise any of us. But Christians, let me ask you this. Why is it we so often are following in the world's footsteps? Sometimes we pursue happiness instead of godliness and yet expect to experience godly joy. It just will not work. The Apostle Paul wisely counsels us to pursue godliness, which brings joy in all circumstances because the pursuit of happiness is based on circumstances and feelings. And so it degrades 
continually because life is filled with lots of disappointments, things that don't work out, things that don't garner happiness. But joy is based on godliness, God-likeness, our relationship with God, and an infilling of real joy when we walk in His ways and honor His Word. We find God's Word recorded by the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, excuse me, I need to back up here a little bit. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, J. Vernon McGee notes that this has been called, the, this, these two verses, Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9, he said, these have been called the briefest biography of Jesus Christ. He is the one who is true. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Whatsoever things are honest, Jesus is honest. Whatsoever, whatsoever things are just, he is called the just one. Pure, the only pure individual who ever walked this earth was the Lord Jesus. He asked the question, which of you convicts me of sin? And no one did. He also said, the prince of this world comes and has nothing to do with me. John 14.30 Satan always finds something he can hook on in, in me, says McGee. How about you? But there was nothing in the Lord Jesus. He was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, we are told in Hebrews 7.26. He was lovely, which means gracious. Virtue has to do with strength and courage. He was the one of courage, a real man. He took upon himself our humanity. If any praise, he is the one you can praise and worship today. And if we do that, if we refocus on the things that make Jesus Jesus, his attributes, his characteristics, and implement those same things in our life in humble obedience, we will experience godlike and godly joy. Let me share with you our scripture for today, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, and whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for providing these directions on how to refocus away from our problems and fears and get back focused on Jesus. Help us to see Jesus more clearly and follow in his footsteps so we can be like him. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Before we uh, sign off here, I have an assignment I want to share with you for today and the rest of the week. And that is this. I urge you to spend some time today or this week meditating over the things listed in Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Since these things describe Jesus Christ, jot down a description of Jesus with each of these attributes. For example, how is Jesus the truth? Meditate on that. Think about that. Pray about that. Accept insight from the Holy Spirit and write down some thoughts on how Jesus is the truth. How is he noble? And do the same with that. And answer this question, what all does it mean when you say that Jesus is right? And go on through the other attributes one by one, asking those kinds of questions 
and writing down some thoughts and feelings about that. I believe that God will bless you if you will do this. And the wonderful thing is that blessing will be you will see Jesus more clearly and you will embrace Jesus more deeply in your spiritual life, in your heart, in your mind, and in your, and in your path as you walk with Jesus every step of the way. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I wish you God's richest blessing, and we invite you back next Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen.